Okay, so this is for general audiences and no archive warnings apply. It's it's L G Goyles. Uh, it's Homestuck. June Peta. The characters are June and Nepeta. Fluff. Valentine's Day Fluff. Coffee Shops. Alternate Universe Canon Divergence. Blind Date. And then we have some Homestuck Pester Logs. June's ex sets her up on a blind date with an old acquaintance. Coco and Tea by Stepper of the Long Earth. June sat in the open-style cafe, cautiously trying to drink her hot chocolate. She had never cared for coffee, and, as hard as Rose had tried to persuade her otherwise, had found tea equally detestable. Now she was stuck with her third option. There were never any choices with hot chocolate, no variants that she could find no matter where she looked. Why couldn't there be hot caramel-flavored or mint chocolate? June felt that there was an untapped market with her fellow hot cocoa drinkers, if markets weren't something that her fellow gods agreed would be a terrible thing to bring back. There had been naysayers like Jane and Dave, but they had been brought around through a series of lectures and PowerPoint discussions by Jade, and then forcibly by Therese with her showing them the dire predictions of the future. It had been a confusing spectacle, and the one involving Strider turning into a robot and Crocker a dictator were particularly polarizing. But it had gotten results. June checked her watch, even though she had a perfectly good phone in her pocket to tell time. She found it convenient to wear a timepiece. She had shown up early to avoid Roxy's wrath. She had said that any flaking out of this meeting would involve dire consequences, along with a lot of pointing fingers at their eyes and then at June's and that I got my eyes on you, Egbert, way that she had. June wasn't sure that having her ex set her up on a blind date was the best idea, but they were on amicable terms. There was no reason to think this wasn't a perfectly normal meeting. Now, if it were for a prank, June would understand. She was lost in potential horrible date ideas Roxy would set up with increasingly ridiculous scenarios when a polite voice interrupted her thoughts. Apologies, but are you by chance Juniper? The speaker was a very cute and very familiar troll. The sports top and casually ripped jean shorts were new, but the fingerless gloves and the cat-like demeanor rang bells that had not been rung in years. Um, yes? Napata? Is that you? Hey, long time no see. Yeah, it... Wow, it has been a while. The troll lounged in the seat across from her, legs to one side. She threw an order at the incoming waiter, who took a quick note before skedaddling back indoors. She turned to June, her elbows on the table, giving the breath player her undivided attention. So, you're my date, huh? Uh, that depends. Did Roxy send you here? Possibly. We are old friends from during the game. I was half of her original sprite. Oh, neat. Um, sorry if I don't remember, but did you go along with the god tier of the trolls plan Rose and Jade cooked up? Of course. You were kind enough to keep me alive. It would be a purr excuse for a, god, for a god if I didn't stay that way. June laughed, taking a hasty sip of her chocolate. Still too hot. There was a delicate balance to the beverage. There was a point where it was no longer hot enough to scald your tongue, but not too cold to be bothered with it anymore. She could always cool it down with her wind, but she had not practiced the technique enough to do it consistently. So, I guess you didn't recognize me, huh? Not at first, no. You look good with short hair. Oh, um, thanks. June was used to compliments about her new look. Her friends had been in varying degrees of enthusiasm when she transitioned, but hearing it from other people was something else. If, if it made her feel, for one of the first times outside her friends, that this whole... Th it made her feel, for one of the first times outside of her friends, that this whole gender thing wasn't a mistake after all. You look gashing yourself. Have you gotten taller? Yeah, my roommates say that I might hit the seven-foot mark if I'm not careful. Uh, why do you need to be careful? She says she will be glabbing furious about it. <laughs> Shorty. <laughs> she sounds fun. Oh yeah, you're not wearing that over-large coat either. I still have it, but the weather was way too nice for it. 
The sun was indeed shining, and the small breeze that blew through was pleasantly warm. Speaking of, I hope you don't mind me asking, but this has been bothering me. Um, aren't trolls nocturnal? I've seen so many during the daylight hours. It was by necessity. Our son would make a cooked kitty out of me if I was to go out under the old alter alternia sun. Here, though, I could lay out in its rays all day and not get so much as a sunburn. She laid down on the table, hands up in a cat posture, making the exact sounds of a meow beast. June laughed, reaching out a hand to pet her head. She had stroked her twice before the reality of what she was doing set in. She snatched her hand away, embarrassed. <laughs> Sorry, that was weird. Uh -huh. Is it okay to pet you? Perfectly acceptable. Tummy rubs are reserved for the second date. Wink. Oh, <laughs> okay then. June stroked her hair while the troll waved her hands in the air in delight, letting out exaggerated sounds of pleasure. Hee <laughs> hee, this is nice, Juniper, but we'd better stop before the waiter gets back. It would be strange for other people watching. Shoot, you're right. The breath player found that she was reluctant to remove her hand, but with a little effort, she managed to stop petting the cat troll to avoid any comments from the staff, who returned with Nepeta's drink. They sipped quietly, each enjoying the fragrances in the other's company. It was June who broke the silence of the question that had been keeping her up for days. Do you know what people do on dates? Mm, shave my fur if I meow. I thought that there was kissing involved, but that traditionally happens at the end. Uh, do you want to skip ahead a little? The words were out before she could stop them. She slapped, clapped a hand over her mouth, appalled at her loose tongue. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know where that came from. Could you find out? I want to get her number. Oh, it's 413. Wait. June stared at the innocent eyes of the olive troll. The green pupils gave nothing away. That was either smooth as hell or I'm dumb as bricks. Hmm, why don't we say that was smooth and you were smart enough to give me your number anyways? I mean, sure, but Nap, we only just met again and... Look, I get it, alright? It's scary not meowing what we're going to do. I didn't say that. If there isn't at least a drop-off at the door, if there isn't at least a drop-off at the door smooches, you will be hearing from my lawyer. Who's your lawyer? Roxy, duh. Ha! <laughs> she doesn't scare me. I have my own defense attorney ready to go, and she is the best out there. It is Terezi, isn't it? Yeah, so? She would be on our side. How do you figure? We will pay her in red chalk. Damn, I'll bid by writing implements. I suppose I will add smooches at the door to the agenda for this afternoon. June pulled out her phone and dramatically typed in a few words before hitting the final check with a flourish. Now I won't forget. Mm. <laughs> Hang on, you do have an agenda then. I wasn't sure what a normal date would be like, so I just picked stuff that I would enjoy doing with someone. Sounds fun. June got up, putting down the money needed for their drinks with a generous tip. What do we have prepared? You'll see. I, I think you'll like it. She held her arm out with a hand to her hip, in the way one might take someone to the dance floor. Shall we depart? June didn't think she could be suave in a t-shirt and skirt, but to Nepeta, the inherent silliness was endearing. To June, the troll's eyes grew brighter before returning to a calm playfulness that she was becoming fond of. The olive blood linked arms, gesturing formally as she did. Lead us on, dear Juniper. Let us see what the evening shall deliver. Smiling, they walked away into the summer day, the two cups sitting empty on the table. A little apart, but growing closer with every step. Aw, that was sweet. <laughs> that was sweet. I like that. Oh, kudos. Okay. Oh, 
<clears throat> Alrighty. Hell yeah.